camera, a flashlight, and a naked woman. That's all you need for a film. So how would you define what you do? It's having fun with people, trying to turn movies into a kind of drug that puts people in a weird state of mind. And creating fights on your movies is great. If you want to scare people, scare them for real. That's what you do. And it's almost like a new version of Cinema Verite. When you do a movie and people faint in the audience because it was too strong to handle, you feel so powerful because, they, oh, the, the, the trick really worked well. Actually, there is something positive about offending people that much. Well, you're making an emotion. At the end, people are kind of respectful, even if they hated the movie or the experience because it looks so real. Anybody ever said that your work was spiritual? Because some people are saying it about my last movie. And I get scared. Because even if spirituality is a primal need, you just need to open the gates of your consciousness. I think art is about creation, so it is spirituality. Forget about religion. Whoever built this room painted these walls. Even if you're a mason, whatever you're doing, if you're making something, putting it in the world, that to me is spirituality. You know, also the best thing that can happen in a movie. It's when you put people into a, like a shamanic trance where they're dreaming, yeah. but you're conducting the dream. The movies I like the best, or the music I like the best, is the one that puts you into those mental waves that are close to your dreams. What do you want to live in? Your dream world or your wake world? And if you can live right in the middle, that's what we like to do. I guess the first time I ever saw it, I went to the movies is when I was a kid and I saw 2001 in Space Odyssey. That was the most overwhelming cinematic experience I ever had. And from there on, I became a film addict, a film buff. Uh, I went to school like everybody and then the, when I turned 17, the first thing I thought of doing after school was uh, going to a film school. I think for each movie you have a different creative process. My first feature was closer to Buñuel's movies or to um, The Honeymoon Killers and it was more realistic than, for example, the last one I did. Um, the very last one I did is uh, kind of psychedelic, so I was uh, watching over and over all the masterpieces of experimental cinema, finding ideas there, also watching music videos, also reading books. And you put all these pieces together, you have a, all your notes, and then you start shooting the movie, and then, and at the end, the result is kind of close to your original references. Now the technology has made so many things possible, like a, th this movie, Enter the Void, that I just shot in Japan, couldn't have been done 10 years before. Uh, it was actually produced and directed at the very right moment. There the, the are visual effects in every, every frame of the movie and uh, it was impossible before. I don't know how they managed to do King Kong in the series or how they managed to do Metropolis in, in the 20s or how they managed to do 2001 in the 60s, but uh, I'm not that talented. I'm doing my best, but uh, hopefully the people who were working with me and now the, the technology of today and made that visually, um, it is what it is. Some people are obsessed by the story in a movie. I don't know if I'm really attracted to the story. Taxi Driver is uh, one of the masterpieces of cinema, but uh, uh, I know that uh, I can watch Scorpio Rising forever and ever, and it has no story. When it comes to lighting, I like using normal bulbs, normal neon lights, and and the, the, the light of the sun, of course, and uh, I like framing. I do the camera in my own movies, but uh, and I have a DP, but most of the time I just ask him to use natural lighting, and um, I get scared when there are too many projectors. Because also, on, on a set, uh, the, then you cannot turn around, and I like being free with the camera to, to, to shoot all around and, and, and change the, the coverage at any moment. Uh, 
I edit my movies myself. It's uh, the only moment where you're finally concentrated on what you got, and uh, it's, um, yeah, it's also like playing with a video, uh, a video game, and um, I don't like letting other people use the mouse instead of me. <laughs> My use of music, uh, I don't know how it's gonna be in the future, but most of the time I put the music that fits with the, um, with the characters of the story. And it's not like an emotional commentary on the, on the subject, it's mostly like things that are on the set, inside the story. Like a whole scene can change once you change the soundtrack. I guess life is the most inspiring thing, stories you... you People tell you like personal stories, things you can read in the newspaper, or also like personal experiences, fears, pains, the desires, and also the other thing that inspires you. If the people you're working with are fun, it's very funny to make a movie. If they are tedious or boring, then the, the shooting becomes boring. But so, so you have to find the right crew to 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 enjoy the shooting and enhance the the result. I would say five advices for an upcoming filmmaker. Number one, watch a lot of movies. Or that's maybe number two. Number one would be uh, stick to your main references. Three, listen to everybody, but don't follow their advice. Four, um, follow your instinct. And five, um, if, if something is not fun on the set, then it might not be funny at the end on screen. Have fun at every moment. I hate the record industry because of the whole idea of they make choices not based on art, they make choices based on money. Yeah, and that's why they're destroyed because they don't know how to make money. You make money by just doing art. Yeah. And you do it and it's pure, yeah. then it succeeds. Because people want yeah. something that's real. When you overthink it, suddenly it becomes like so when, contrived. When, when people also tell you, why did you do this? Was it to shock? You say, no, it's just because rem I wanted to do something like the, the movies or the, the books that I liked uh, when I was 10, when I was 12, when I was 15. So if, if you do a movie like Deliverance, it's not because you want to shock people. It's just because you really like Deliverance at that age. Or, or, we or, or, or if you like 120, you know, The Saddle by Pasolini, you say, why wouldn't I do a movie that, is, uh, that yeah. goes that way? He did yeah. it, so someone else did it, why wouldn't you do it? Yeah, and someone, you know, it's... For me, uh, because I've been threatened so much, <laughs> you know, throughout the years, if, I, if, I have, if I'm gonna go on stage and I gotta risk my life, but then at the same time, like, if I can't do what I do, then <laughs> I don't wanna live, so... <laughs> you have to start to, to figure out how to split it up, like... <laughs> Where's life and where's art? And if they're not one and the same, then it just can't exist. You have to be what you do. Um, just realizing I can't create a crazier metaphor than what I'm already living. So I started to just, it made me reaccept myself because I started to get in a place in my life where I didn't. Uh, like or believe in myself anymore, mm. which is the worst place for an artist, mm. especially when your life and your art are the same, because mm -hmm. then that's really you killing yourself in a way. Mm. It's we get to a point where mm. you've made a, several movies mm. that have made a giant impact mm. on everyone and on me, and I've made records, and you start to second guess mm. because people implant this question in your mm. head. I think those question marks come from a dollar sign and not from art. Mm. And those question marks are what makes art start to compromise. Mm. Because I could be happy living in a cardboard box. Mm. The main goal is to do movies that will impress for a long time the, the, the audience. And it's not about like hitting the commercial success, it's like uh, hitting uh, long-term success. Long-term, mm. that, that's the point. <laughs> Oh, this is like in uh, the state fair. We can when dance. When you take a thing and you break the plates. 
<laughs> so we take this rock and we throw it at the place. Uh, what do you think could have happened in this dungeon? Um, well, no smoking, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this isn't a dungeon, though. No, is there, are we in a room. dungeon? But it's, uh, it looks you like... You know, if I had seen all, all this, I wouldn't have thought it's in France. It doesn't, doesn't smell like France. It's like we crawl. Look. I'm crying. <laughs> I like fast-moving zombies. You yeah. need to make a zombie film. I want to be I, a zombie. I, 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 there are two kind of movies I would like to... A zombie movie, the ultimate zombie movie, or, or the ultimate cannibal movie, like, you know, cannibal holocaust, or... Please. Me. <laughs> Me. And... Look. That's what... Oh. Every day. Okay. Blood pack. She's got talent. She bites. <laughs> 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 Now, Gaspar now, I proclaimed director, and I were just reenacting <laughs> the two characters, Dr. Frankenstein and Igor. Igor. Yeah. <laughs> For your pleasure. But we are the new masters of horror. So we do that. What's your favorite horror movie lately? My favorite horror movie of all time? No, lately. Lately. Um, lately, I really liked... Um, Inside, huh? with Beatrice Dahl. I haven't seen it. Was it good? Yeah, yeah it was, French movie. It was French movie. Yeah, it was disturbing. Uh, yeah, yeah. That lately, that was my favorite of the, all time. The Innocence, of 1959, I think. I like psychological horror yeah. because the scariest thing is what you don't see on camera, yeah. what your brain imagines. What's your album. What's your favorite album? No, what's your favorite? No, what's your album? favorite album? Besides mine. My, what's my favorite album. My favorite soundtrack. My favorite. Peace, yeah. for record, um, Revolution 9, in the White Album. That's great. <laughs> the White Album's my favorite record, because it was the year I was born, yeah. and um, it's just, a, to me, it's like, it's, it's very significant. But I remember that piece, Revolution 9, I would put it over and over and over. And try to when I was, Yeah, yeah, oh, both, well, yeah, of course, I, uh, I was listening to it backwards. What's your piece? My favorite piece of music? Yeah. I mean, uh, rock and roll wise, uh, Diamond Dogs with David Bowie record, but also the soundtrack to The Hunger. Yeah.